Okay, so we have an interesting way to start off this conversation. You were actually a patent engineer before you got in robotics, correct? That's correct. I was. Can you dive? Can you tell us what that was like? Like, talk about being a patent engineer and what you do, because I'm not sure all our listeners know exactly what goes into that. So it's you have to love language and you have to love to some degree law, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of rules behind that, but you also have to love technology. So the exciting part is you get all the invention from your R&D, right? From all these creative people. And then you take that and then you have to make a decision if you can file a patent on that or not. Mm -hmm. So you have to make a judgment if it's new enough and you know, there, there, then there comes the law stuff to to de decide that but you work with a lot of creative people so it is more fun than it sounds like yeah no i think it sounds really cool when you're dealing with patents there's creativity there's obviously the legal aspect to it as well you really get to dip into a lot of fields that very few people yeah. dabble in but speaking of your your current field now so denise you've been with kuka for about 15 years now or so yes awesome and so you're focusing right now primarily on mobility within the KUKA ecosystem of all the things you can do. Can you talk to us more about, you know, what are you seeing within the mobility market and how is KUKA playing a role in that? So, first of all, to start off, you know, the mobility market is, it's, it's kind of, you know, the, n the new world of robotics right now. So besides the software powered AI, right? right? So, but if you, if you just from a robotics standpoint, so we have collaborative robots, you know, we have all that, but there is, so now driving the mobiles around and, and letting them do stuff, um, there's so much potential. And for me, the ex most interesting part is that it's cross industry now. That's also true for robotics, right? So, but I started with KUKA in the automotive sector. So, you know, it, and it's a great industry to work with, you know, but, but now I see all these different industries and these different, you know, how do you do jewelry? How do you pack, I was at an air caterer, you know, um, how do you do the stuff that then ends up on your table in an airplane? So, yeah. so, so, so there's, there, there's that. There's so much more variability you're seeing yeah. in this industry uh, than uh, just automotive cars, 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 cars. Right, uh, which I is I nice too, but yeah. I, I want to know how those, like you're talking like airline dishes basically? Yes. Like, it, like real, that's, uh, how does that work? <laughs> Tell us a bit about that. We're just learning new things yeah. as we keep going. So if I, it's a couple of years back, you know, but when, you know, when we came up with the, so, so we, we often come up with the new type of robotics. Like, yeah, we had the first industrial version of a collaborative robot. You know, mm -hmm. we were kind of um, one of the first bringing mobile robots. So, so you, you get interest from all over the world. So I and, and was actually in Singapore. So I had to fly there, right? Mm -hmm. So I never, so, and it's actually a lot of people <laughs> putting together your meal. Yeah. But what I did not know is, and I can't remember the specific airline behind that, you can order very specific food if you travel in an airplane. So you can say I have a nut allergy or I only want to have seafood or what. So, so there are some airlines that actually give you, I don't know if it's true today yeah. still, right? But sure. So, so they have to be very flexible. And um, it was also one of the setup where the idea was great right to to have robots doing but sometimes it's not the right time yet you mm -hmm. know and if you and then customers start to realize okay if i want to handle salad right how how do i do that or if i want to go where humans are very flexible yeah so absolutely and with mobile i mean a uh, a stationary robot kind of people understand it, it's standing there and you have to do so mobile now gets into more interesting ideas i don't want to say crazy because you know you can do a lot of yeah. things mm -hmm. but really interesting ideas well i think what you're seeing now is you're seeing a you're seeing a lot of companies out there um wanting to know what can i automate that i've never done before and as so many different industries are experiencing work shortages that they didn't before they want to know, can, I, can a robot do this? Can a robot do this? Can I move product A from product B without the need from a high load driver or a forklift or a worker? So we're just seeing so many new things now. That's, 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 that's true. And um, sometimes I'm surprised what they come up with. Um, I mean, the, 
and and if you look at to our robot, it's really it's meant for going to production environment, right? So, but but people come up with, I have this, you know, I have to clean bathrooms, <laughs> and I think that's a good approach, but I'm not sure if that's you, you know. So so, but other than that, yeah, there are. Since I start, I mean, I think I do mobile now for seven years roughly. Yeah. Since then, now if I enter a plant, do you know how many carts they are? How many people carry something from AB? I was never aware of that mm -hmm. amount. So. H how many are there? Just to put it in context, like if you had hundreds, thousands. Like I mean, de it de a little bit depends, but sure. I mean, depending on the setup of the line. You know, you have to bring every workstation have to have material coming in. You know, there can be hundreds of boxes that have to be brought in and out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, we are talking a huge potential here. What else has surprised you? You mentioned just the sheer size of some of these applications, but uh, I'm curious what's one that maybe uh, intrigued you or surprised you the most recently? What, what surprised me coming from this you know automation background that sometimes it's we, we always think about complex things robots can do right and help but sometimes they are simple things that mm -hmm. might help a lot you know that also seems to be like like opening a bottle and close it or just open it mm -hmm. uh, depending on how how high value people you have doing that or how often you have do that, that might be a valuable task. So sometimes these are very easy tasks that, and, and you expect something totally complex, right? Mm. That doesn't mean that easy is not, you know, even if it's a simple task for us, doesn't mean that it's not a more I, complicated. I, I think that's a great point, right? When you're thinking about robotics, sometimes you're thinking of these like, I don't know why we default to this, but like, oh, it's going to do some really high tech yeah. tasks, some yes. high tech thing. And yeah, at the end of the day, opening and closing a bottle is a task that is probably very boring for a yeah. person mm -hmm. to do. And of course, that would be the right spot to automate first and leverage a robot first if you can do that. Awesome. Well, Denise, thank you so much for being on our podcast today and the insights that you've brought, everything from starting your career as a patent engineer to now you're <laughs> being 15 years at KUKA working in the mobility market. We really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>